Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays. And today it's a Saturday, probably a Saturday when, yeah, Saturday when this video goes out. So that means it's time for a Minecraft update. And we've, been, as ever, we're playing the Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles, which is why there's so much stuff. Although the giant chickens are unrelated to the mod, they're just because somebody likes building silly things. Anyway, after last week's um, lack of lack of play from me, I've come back in and I've been starting to work towards making Terra Steel, which is apparently the next big thing that's going to be needed in this game, and it's what lots of people are somewhat pining for at the moment. So, I was told that um, this basically needed me to work work through the, the White Magic Tier 2 questline. So I've been doing that, and here we go. So I've, I've, um, I've, I've finished up a load of the quests around here, because before I got about as far as making the Brew of Fleet Feet, which is great it's a potion that allows you to run quickly whoop de doo so since then i've started making incense and incense of fleet feet which is a uh, an incense stick that allows you to run really quickly so again not particularly exciting but it's bringing me along here along the along the um, the quest lines over towards this terra steel here which uh, everyone is really really excited about and as you can see i didn't actually quite get to because apparently one stream was not long enough the next thing I made was this Rod of the Skies. This is actually quite fun. It took, um, what do we have to make for this? Yes. So it was um, a load of stuff in the in the Mage's Workshops. This is obviously a, a magical thing. Um, and getting all of this stuff together was a little bit of an effort, especially the runes. But what it has done is allowed me to make the the Rod of the Skies here, which is what I've been referring to as a, um, a rod of I must go, my people need me. Because when you right click, you just shoot up miles into the air like that. Which is absolutely great. It's a bit like a slime sling, but with but sort of even easier. But it uses mana. Um, it doesn't fire you forwards, but once you're up there, if you've got an elytra, you can then start flying around like this, quite happily, and you can then use it again and get yourself even higher into the air. So with with this and without too much difficulty, I could get all the way up onto this slime island, for example, and then fly back over. So this is this is great for getting around. Um, the only downside of it is it does use mana up. So each time I each time I trigger it, it uses a chunk of mana, and that means that I need to have a supply of mana in my inventory, um, which I do at the moment in the shape of this uh, band of mana, which. I don't know how to find out how much it's got in it. There's obviously there's a, um, a bar underneath that shows how much it's got in, but it doesn't actually show particularly helpfully in any any way, shape, or form exactly how much is in there. I did also build this band of aura, which is a another ring that is supposed to produce mana gradually over time and fill this one up. So I've got both of them in my I'm wearing both of them. So this should mean that gradually this one will fill up, and maybe if I'm really lucky, it'll fill up faster than I use it. But that remains to be seen. So that was up here, working through these, um, working through these, these, this line of quests as well. Because I got as far as the jeweler's workshop, but I hadn't actually made anything in it. Um, so yeah, it can store up to half a million mana. That sounds like a lot. Um, let's try and remember that number. So half a million. This doesn't say how much it produces, unfortunately. Um, there's no, there's no clues in there. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, these these things were all sort of getting basically mostly getting mana steel together with some runes and illumination patterns, other other sort of bits and pieces that mostly weren't too difficult, um, because I mean, as ever I'm just stealing stuff that other people have been making. So I looked in here, the mana tablet that that was quite expensive, but apparently, especially because of the glass lenses, apparently there's going to be an easier way to make these later when everyone's going. So everyone's going to want me to make them a mana tablet at some point. But for now, it's reckoned it's not worth it because these glass lenses, um, actually they're not. Oh. Okay, I need starlight infusion to make them. That's 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 well, that's the step that's just needed. Um, whereas this way, it's rather expensive in aquamarine, which is a bit of a shame because aquamarine is not trivial to get hold of. Basically, it requires somebody to go off into the fairy dimension and do a load of mining. And so we're um, yeah, we're 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 not we're not doing that particularly yet. <clears throat> Although actually, looking at that, there were some carpenter recipes that might be might be might have potential. So yeah, we'll we'll find ways of making all this sort of stuff. But the trickiest part of this, actually, because because all of the ingredients have been gathered and were in the computer system, this is mostly fairly easy. I could go over to the computer system here to say I need all of the aquamarines, and I can't spell. There we go. I've got 97 of them left. So that's pretty good. I can grab all of those, <clears throat> then bring them over to the uh, mage's workshop or the jeweler's workshop over here, and and assemble them fairly easily. The problem was a lot of these recipes required that they, they needed some sort of weird fluid like molten inferium for this one or white magic essence for this one. So I was doing a bit of sort of going, where do I get these liquids from? Ah, and that was the hard part. So I needed to go and I need to make white magic dust and melt it in a, in, a, in in something. So I then needed to go off and get glowstone and mana powder, illumination powder and mana powder. Mana powder, it turns out, is made by chucking pulverized mana infused metal into the mana pool and so on. So there was a bit of a sort of 
the usual sort of trail of having to make lots of different things in order to get that. Um, but the hardest part of it, well, the most frustrating part of it, was get, then get, was having to go off somewhere else to get these liquids. So typically I'd have to go off to the personal crafting area, which is miles away down there. Um, okay, it's not that far when you can fly, but it's still it's, it's, it's a bit of a hassle having to go over there in order to get the, get the things you need and then come back again. Um, so that's why I've ended up with all these tanks along here, which have got little bits of Molten Prudentium, Inferium, Platinum, Lumium, Dark Essence. Um, in here we've got no liquids. In here we've got still got some White Magic Essence. So I should take that out and put it in another tank. Do I have a tank? I don't have a tank. I did make quite a lot of tanks though. So if I look in here for tanks, yes, I made I made a, lot, a huge number of copper tanks um, earlier because because we're getting through quite a lot of them, and that means I can pull that out and I can stick it in the in the tank farm over here, and I've got a bit of a collection going on. And so this is this is all very well, but it's not very automated, and we have um which way am i looking uh that way down here other people and i shall probably cover this in a bit more detail later but for now i'll just mention that other people have been building up a fluid storage system down here which has lots and lots of different liquids and this is all becoming part of the main storage computerized system and there's also now added in in here a system now as well as the um, as well as the crafting terminal is also a fluids terminal so presumably you can come along here with a tank and go bloop and fill it up from what from any, from any one of these and so if I had that up in the tower then I'd be able to I'd be able to fill up with all of the things I need in order to get, start doing the uh, the more advanced craftings that see all seem to require fluids over there so let's um let's get back up to the top come on fire again fire again there we go so yes, that's that's been allowing me to make these things, but a lot of this has been using quite a lot of mana. So we've got we've got the mana pool over here that is is producing it at a decent, uh, at a, at, it's, it's, it's storing it and it stores an amount of it. I wouldn't like to say exactly how much, but it is mostly full, and it's full up to the point where this system has now stopped running because the signal has got all the way around here. This is now. Um, 13 sixteenths, no, 13 fifteenths full. So we've got a signal all the way around here. This is now stopped because we reckon this is just a good point to fill it up to. And the way this works, I, I talked about this in a previous episode, but we've got um, blood-infused coal in here that's being dropped onto the pressure plate, then being picked up by the endo flames, which are burning it, and then they put the mana into the mana pool. Um, and wet as long as as long as they're fueled. So this system is great. I, I I need to do some reworking of this. That's going to happen next time. But these endo flames do produce mana at a relatively low rate, but they do produce it. Um, and I've got them linked to now two different mana spreaders in order to put the mana over into there. And then I've got this mana spreader putting the mana into into this into the runic altar. So that's 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 required. I've also got a couple of extra flowers. The Therma Lily is one that will turn a nearby block of lava into into mana. So we want uh, if I feed that with lava, then that'll produce it quite quickly. And this is a nice synergy with the Dark Magic because the Dark Magic allows you to produce lava from the Life Essence, and then I'm standing on a torch, burning my feet. Um, and then this will turn that into into mana that can be used for white uh, light magic. So essentially, I be, would be theoretically be able to supply this from all from blood, although how we'll automate that it remains to be seen i've also got a rosa arcana i forget how this works but it was in one it was in the quest line which is why i just put it there oh yeah this is one that turned xp into um in, into 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 magic so if i stand here you can see my xp bar at the bottom is it dropping no because this flower is currently full that's why it's not dropping okay so it, the flower is filled up, the mana spreader will then empty it, but the mana spreader is full, the mana, this mana spreader is empty, but that mana spreader is full, um, probably because of that one, that's why it's twinkling. Um, and so eventually this will drain, this mana spreader will eventually drain into the pool, and this flower will drain into the mana spreader. And we can, and you can, so we, we can generate mana just by standing close to that, but it does burn through the XP. You can see now, ah, oh, my level's dropped down to 114 now, because we've been getting through a little bit of mana from that. Um, yes. So that's yeah. So that's that was another thing. I built it because it was on the um, it was on the quest line, and I, I essentially needed to in order to keep going. Um, I don't know whether we'll actually use that, but it sounds like it could have potential. This thermal lily, the one that turns lava into mana, does sound actually quite useful. The entropinium will absorb an exploding um, TNT. 
that might be useful. If we can automate the production of TNT, then we could automate putting it down. But it only produces 6,500 mana per explosion, which isn't a huge amount. This one produces 18,000, which is still not a huge amount. I'm, I can't see any of these really being enough. Given that we discover that the band of mana stores 500,000, there's just a bit of an those numbers don't really fit together very nicely in my head. I don't know what a mana pool stores. Let's see if we can find out. The mana pool stores an unknown amount of mana. Okay, so I might have to go and have a look in the in the wiki to get some actual numbers for these, because yeah, to, just to, just to find out what everything does and, and and what sort of balance of numbers would be needed to, to keep all of this working. So yes, that's it. But still, that's 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 working quite well. The next thing on the quest line, which I haven't done anything with yet because I just kept moving, was the mana splitter. And this is basically a system for joining up mana pools between them. Uh, so you can put one of those down, you can put a mana pool on all four sides of it. You could presumably chain those together to get more and more and more mana pool storage space. And I guess, and I think the reason you might need to do this is in order to link up various mana spreaders and so on, just to get the whole system all working off one. Rather than trying to run to all of one mana pool where you'd struggle to fit everything around it, you can then have a, a mana spreader here and another mana pool with, I don't know, more mana spreaders here for passing it out to other other systems and, and so on. Um, I need to look into how you pipe mana around because this doesn't seem particularly great. And as far as I'm aware, it's not a normal liquid, so you can't pump it around through liquid fluid ducts, which is a bit of a shame. That would be rather nice. So, yes, I've made incense. I've made incense of running fast. I've made the wand of my people need me. I've made flowers to make it, to make mana. Um, oh, there's another flower that makes clay from sand. I've not used that yet, but it sounds interesting. I think I planted it somewhere. Did I plant it somewhere? Yes, there it is over there. Let's 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 try this because I've not I've not played with it yet, and and clay is always nice to have. So if I come over to the computer system, I can have a look in here. I can ask for some sand. Get some just normal sand. There we go. And presumably, if I come up here, round to the clay flower thing, as it is so cunningly labelled, I can do this. Or does it need to be a block down from that? I'm not sure. Let's see if the quest line says. Oh, supplied with mana. Okay, so we need we need to give it mana in order for that to work. So I'd need one that I'd need a mana spreader over there to be zapping it. So th so this won't actually work for now. But in th in, in general, this will be a way of making clay out of uh, out of, out of nothing. So that's quite nice. So let's dig all this back up. So there's no evidence of my mistakes. <laughs> um, there we go. Hide the evidence. Not like I'm making a YouTube video that'll be seen by by dozens of people. Dozens. Um. Oh yes, the next the next thing on the on the quest list was quite nice. This this was the um, the Cirrus amulet and the pyroclast pendant. Uh, this again was a sort of standard. Oh, this is one that needed prudential. That's why I have some of that down there. So this was again the no normal sort of stuff. But I needed to make some mana infused strings. So that's just throwing st string in the mana pool. Fairly easy. I did need to make runes for this, and runes are quite annoying to make at the moment. And this is mostly due to my memory, but. Whenever I need to make one of these, I then have to go downstairs to the to the terminal and try and get all of these things. But I need to look at this and go, okay, I need I need dilithium, I need mana steel, I need mana powder, I need snowball, I need feather, I need string mesh, and I'll remember probably two of those in the time it takes to close this and go into the computer system. So I'll get a couple of them, then I'll have to just keep going round and round and round that system. This one wasn't too bad, but some of the oops, some of the runes are a bit overcomplicated, and some of them stack multiple levels of runes in them, and it's it's just just, just a bit much. So I'm gonna so at some point I'm gonna try and automate that and have a system that will just at the very least i'll do the semi-automated thing like al has done for making copper tanks and things where it puts all the bits and pieces you need into a, into a chest and you can then just dump them into the into the altar or maybe i'll try and get it a bit a bit cleverer than that we shall see how that goes but it, that would be nice but from that i was able to make the cirrus amulet which is an amulet of double jump which is especially great when you have the um uh, the elytra as well because you can often then as you're sort of flying around and you realise you're sort of losing height a bit quicker than you wanted to. You can sometimes, sometimes I'm not quite sure exactly how it works, but sometimes you seem to be able to double jump again before you touch the ground. So on the occasions where somebody else has borrowed the um, the mana ring and therefore I can't use the um, the rod of the skies to just do that, which is much easier. The double jump is still quite nice, and just for getting around normally, double jump is is very nice. It'd just be nice if it sort of you know reset a little bit quicker and became became active again a bit a bit more uh, a bit more quickly. The next thing was this pyroclast pendant, which, according to the quest line, basically, if you're on fire, it'll put you out. I think you still, you're, so if you fall in lava or get quick, quick catch fire, you'll 
you'll still take some damage from it, but as soon as you leave the fire, the fire, the fire will go out on you, so you'll stop taking damage from it then. So that sounds quite useful. Um, could be better. It's not going to keep protect you from all heat damage, but at least it's a, it's a good start. Another thing we've been talking about automating, because I spent a little bit of time doing it manually, is regrowing flowers for the uh, for the petals over here. So at the moment, I've got this storage system, and we've got quite a lot of some of the petals, but not very many of others. But if you need, if you realise you're running a bit low on one of them, well. I can take some of those out of there, so, and then I can go over here and I can say I need some bone meal. Um, like that, take some of that, uh, put it in there, let's put the sand back in the system. And then I can scamper back up here to the grassy the grassy area, and I can put these down. Like that. And I can run, run along here and bone meal them, and they all turn into massive great pretty flowers. I can then run through here with the, uh, with the shears, shear them all down again. And then that gets me, the, each, each petal then turns into one tall mystical flower of the appropriate colour. I can then turn each one of those flowers into four petals. So the system does allow you to make lots and lots and lots of petals really quite quickly. It's not actually that difficult. But the fact there's quite a lot of them, and it's, it's a little bit of a faff to, to go through and do all of this. And if you misclick, you end up with long grass on the top of your tower as well, which looks untidy, like this, which looks unsightly. Um, which is a bit of a shame. But it's it's not too bad to make all of these and then and then crush them down. But it would but but as everything else, it would be nice if it was automated. So once again, I can make all of those. I can then come back down here and I can put then now I, I took out seven. I've now got 61. I can put them all into back into here and now I've got plenty of those. And if I was worrying about this a bit more, I'd then go along and I'd do the white ones as well because we're a bit short of them and maybe some of these green ones because there's only about 20. And you know just try and keep them all above a stack, maybe above maybe into somewhere in three figures. Um, so, yeah, it's it's okay, but it's occasionally a little bit annoying. Uh, so it'd be nice if this was a bit more automated and there was just always a nice big supply of them. So that's something else I'm considering. Uh, let's put that back in there. There we go. Finally, well, pretty nearly finally, I came down here. I noticed this... I noticed the uh, system down here was idle and everything had filled up, so we we managed to soak through all of the all of the runes I'd been making. So if we look up here in this chest, we now have a fairly crazy number of runes. So I started trying to make some slightly higher tier ones. Um, I think I've got to the point where I I I, might, I'm, I'm, I could possibly just calm down a little bit. Um, but you know what? Let's let's put some more in just because just because I can. And this is one of those systems where. You, you make you make the runes of one tier, then you put them in here like this. You turn four of each one into a into a into a block, and then there we go. And each one of those blocks can then be soaked to turn into one of these runes. And then you mix it, and then you combine four of these runes to make the next tier of block. Uh, there we go. And then those can be each one of those when you soak it turns into the tier three runes, which can then be combined into the next tier of block and so on. But I don't have a high enough level um, uh, blood altar for that yet. So this is this is as high as I can go. But the tier three runes, which are yeah, reinforces tier two and imbued is tier three, I believe. So it goes red, green, blue. But the green and the blue are such similar colours. I, I struggle to tell the difference sometimes unless I put my nose two inches from the monitor. So. Yeah, I'm making those. Those are so far I've mostly used for um, for making upgrades to the blood altar. So it's a bit of a I'm making I'm using the blood altar to make upgrades to the blood altar so that I can make more upgrades to the blood altar. So it's it's a bit circular, but I think but Tristan's been coming along and soaking quite a lot of stuff in the in the in the life essence as well. So I guess he's been finding it quite useful to have a blood altar and the whole system that works just works well. And I was going to say um, this elevator doesn't work. There we. go. Go. I was going to say the uh, the blood infused coal that we're using over here for this system was um, also uses all of that all that dark magic stuff. It does use dark magic stuff, but it doesn't use the life essence thing. It, this is just blood soaked rather than life essence soaked. Um, but that doubles the amount of fuel you get from each each piece of coal, so that's nice. <coughs> so that's been me. Um, <coughs> actually, no, we did go down and um, investigate a sort of a boss mob type thing. It was a giant, um, a giant sort of metal knight. I think it was called a ferro, ferro something or other. Um, and it, it was a sort of a, a kind of Zelda type um, boss creature because you had to wait for it to be mid attack before you could hit it, and it, just, it felt, yeah, it felt like a mob from a Zelda game basically. So that was mildly interesting. Only, only killed me once, so it didn't do too badly there. 
So next time, um, yes, I want to continue the um, continue and get it get and actually finally get the terror steel on this on this quest line here because um, people have been talking about it for probably getting on for a month now and it's taken me a little while to do it partly because I was away last week and then this week I was just doing all of the pre prereqs in order to get down here to do these these quests so there was stuff to do in order to get there but hopefully I'll be able to get this done next week so we'll see that see that happening then I, I want to get the fluid computer interface in the tower so rather than having um, all of these rather than having all of these tanks over here with various different fluids in those tanks can be way off in the in the storage system and I can just grab whatever I need, chuck it in and then when it's done, pull it out and chuck it back in the storage system. So that'll be rather nice to have. Um, but I, I think that should be fairly easy because basically somebody else has done all the hard work for me. I want to see if there's a good way to just melt stuff. So the Inferium... Um, when I when I needed the uh, the liquid inf the molten inferium in order to to do to build whichever rings it was, I ended up going over to the um, the farm area down there because that's I was thinking well that's where the inferium is so I'll go down there and have a have a look at it so I went down there got some inferium made the inferium, but it occurred to me that's all on the computer system so I could have done that up here that would have been much easier because I think Pete last week or maybe the week before um, built up the computer system down there to get all of that onto computer store onto um, main network storage so that was good. Um, so, but I, but I went down there anyway, which I didn't need to do. But then I went over here in order to melt it, which I think I did need to do. So it'd be nice if there'd be some way of just saying I would like this melting and doing that through the um, through the computer system without having to go over there. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm sure somebody will tell me in the comments. Um, another big thing that I want to do is tidy up the tower storage, which because um, it's all a bit of a mess up here. I've got well, that chest is empty, but in general, <laughs> it's a bit of a mess up here. I've got I've got an inferior apple for some reason, and a flower pouch. That, okay, that is appropriate. I've got some stairs up here. I've got a, a pestle and not pestle and water, flint and steel. I've got some some trousers. I've got a hoe. The, 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 just, just junk up here in all of the in a load of the storage chests. So I think a lot of this stuff I need to make more of these draw systems and then I need to get them onto the draw controller system and hook that up to the um, the, the uh, main network as well so that whilst the stuff will be stored here it'll be available everywhere it'll be it'll be available for me as well to pull out of the storage system and when I start trying to automate the rune generation up there that'll be um, on the on, on work off the network as well so that's another thing automate rune generation automate flower growing just generally try and get lots and lots of things automated so we'll see, we'll see how that all comes on so those are the things I need to do now let's have a look at everyone else. What everyone else has been up to as well, because that's always nice to see. We've got a pretty big list this week. Um, I don't know whether this is just because people have been being verbose, or whether it's because they've actually been doing a lot of stuff. So Mike has been off, um, off, off doing a load of mining. He says he's been off in the twilight dimension, uh, or twilight forest dimension, mining. That's the perp. That's going through the purple portal up here, um, and that explains why there was quite, why there seemed to be quite so many. Um, aquamarines around because I believe you get them from through there so thank you for, thank you to him for that he was also then and then apparently started trying to make majestic ingots to be honest he then says he learned he, he realized that meant he needed to read through quest lines realized he can't read I don't know whether he actually made anything useful or not out of that because it's a bit bit vague in his notes but he did then go and make some more steel apparently basalt Oh, he did make some majestic ingots, but he's forgotten why he wanted them. Great. Okay, well, majestic ingots, they, they seem to keep cropping up in stuff I want to build, so that's quite nice. Maybe I'll be able to nick them. We'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, he also had a, he he's also seems to have acquired a cockatrice from somewhere, which he's been going around sort of threatening people with, which is lovely. Um, okay, yes, one of the big things that's been going on on the sort of the building side of, well, everything is that we finally torn down that barracks building that was in this in the sort of space over here because it wasn't really doing anything we had I think we have some beds elsewhere I know Mike's got at least a couple in his house I think Tristan's got one in the storage in the storage building for some reason I should probably have one in the uh, in the wizard's tower just for sort of completeness sake so that building wasn't really doing anything so we set fire to it as you do and then demolished the bits that didn't burn. Apparently wool doesn't burn, who knew? Um, and then Mike put in another bit of pathway going around here. So we've got a nice sort of... Yeah, he, he likes building up these paths. This one down here needs decorating. But that's because the uh, the storage building was also expanded. And has had a bit of a roof put on it and some, and some pillars around it. So let's go down and have a look at that. Um, gradually. <laughs> it's me being bad with the Elytra. Uh, Elytra. So yes, down here, the... Um, 
essentially a big a wall a nice marble wall has been put up all the way around the uh, storage building and um, a, a most of a roof put on it but it's been it's been left with a hole in the top because buildings that don't have holes in the roof are kind of annoying because it means when you're flying around which most of us do all the time it's difficult to get into them you have to try and aim for the doorways and that's difficult so it's nice when they've got holes in the roof like that or alternatively like that building over there where there is a hole in the roof with then another roof on top so you've got a nice little landing area in there but the rain still doesn't get in so that's a good design I'm a fan of that one um, and then outside there it's got this sort of overhanging um, porch thing going all the way around which is uh, it looks 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 nice and pretty adds to this feel of it and we've got the uh, the pillars in the in that as well to get to get to, to, to help with the look and uh, massive lines of fire as well to keep the darkness at bay this is a work in progress as you can tell by the earth along along the bottom of here um, and it ended up blocking off the way into the exploding explosion room so that's also been opened up we're going to this is going to need to be some sort of nice marble passageway I guess but uh, well I'm, I'm sure somebody will finish that off at some point <laughs> he says optimistically given how long it took to get, it takes to get buildings finished in this in uh, with, with our group so yes this now looks a bit better up there at the top it makes the um, uh, how can I get up there let's use the the problem with the rod of the skies is it always jumps you the same height it doesn't seem to be able to do little jumps but uh, yeah it gives slightly easier access to all of our logos which is which is nice and they're all um, <laughs> all labeled as you can see um, and yeah, it's just generally improving the look of the place, uh, which I'm uh, yes, def definitely, definitely a fan of. This is now starting to look much better. Maybe at some point the uh, the layout inside here can be tidied up a little bit, but um, it might become less and less necessary as time goes by, and we don't need to go in here as much because everything is accessible from elsewhere. So a lot of that is cosmetic, as you can clearly see. But over here on a more functional level, we've got the um, the liquid storage that I hinted to earlier. So along here, this is fairly straightforward. It's just tanks for each of the liquids, and then on the back of them, they've got a fluid interface that goes into the computer, computer into the, into the main computer bus system, and we're using 16 channels on it. So there's quite a lot there. Um, oh yeah, and we've got another of the P2P devices here. So that, that's sensible. This is on its presumably on its completely own own P2P network because there's going to be a lot of stuff on this. Um, yeah, we've got 21 21 fluids in here at the moment, which is that's quite a lot, especially as I'm now thinking of coming down and putting in another six or so. So that's going to get be starting to get pretty close to the uh, to the limit. So we might need to have multiple um, outputs from the uh, from from the computer network to get multiple fluid storage systems. Or maybe we'll be able to come up with some some way of using a fluid storage bus. You're using channels on here a bit more efficiently because at the moment it's using one channel for every fluid. And that feels like a lot when we're using one channel for essentially all of the items that are stored in here, because this is connected up to a this is connected up to a single draw controller, and that means all of this is on what all of this stuff is on one single connection to the network, which makes it a bit more manageable. Down there, can I see can I see anything down there? No, I can, well I can see I can see some dense cable, and that that's using four channels. Now I don't know exactly where where the how this is all wired up but, but basically that thing over there the fact it's on 21 or out of 32 already kind of worries me a little bit and there's some more liquids in here that we haven't or fluids in here that we haven't done anything with yet but it's, it's an excellent start and if necessary I mean we can always put in more um, P2P connections so we go down here into the computer system into the hub of the computer system one of these will be probably for the um, I don't know which one maybe it's this one um, Yes, this one is for the fluid network. You can tell because it's got 21 channels on it. So there's no reason why we couldn't have another one on here and another and another because we're only using four um, uh, four P2P networks so far, and you can cram 32 P2P networks down a cable, which is why we're using them. Um, actually, ooh, I say that you, we can put four networks in, but then you can have you can put 32 networks in, but you can only then you can have 32 outputs from the networks. We've already got eight of those. So whilst we have four networks here. We then somewhere down this channel, this cable, we have um, eight connections to those networks. So there's some some duplicating going on in there, um, which is going to make it a little bit harder. But actually, that just means we could potentially then have another cable coming out of another face of this block and going off in a different direction. So I imagine what we'll probably end up doing is having a or potentially might end up doing is having one cable that goes off into the into the tunnels to go off to the rest of the world but this is the one this one has six on it so there's two others we could save two of those connections by having another cable that just comes as far as here without redoing all of that um, 
and then having another one that controls all of the that, that, that powers or provides the interfaces for all of the stuff up in the um, in the storage system because that's going to be the heaviest part of it that and, and this area over here which as you can see comes off a separate side here so we've got three and another nine channels being used over here so we're being reasonably sensible with that now if things get really really bad there is also the possibility of what we're calling P3P. So instead of P2P, which is peer-to-peer, -peer, we then you can then nest those. So you can have peer-to-peer -peer over peer-to-peer, -peer, and that so we're calling it P3P for the sake of sanity and because it amused me when I suggested it. Um, and that would allow us to then probably get around some of these problems, but it gets more and more complicated at that point. I've also noticed that I'm running out of, I'm starting to starve to death. So one of the other things I did um, in in the last uh, in the last session, right at the end, was I ran around the um, ran around the the area upstairs, just harvesting all of the fruit and nuts that were that are around there, and shoving them all in my um, inventory for for later use. Because you don't get a great deal of nutrition from these, but they were they were just hanging from the trees, and they're things I've not eaten yet. So I thought if I go around grab lots of these, it'll help with the general push towards getting more more hearts on my health bar. So I'm just going to yeah, run through, eat, eat as many of these as I can. Or possibly lag will stop me eating them. We shall see how this goes. But yeah, through all of that, through that massive fruit salad, I've now managed to regain most of, most of, most of my um, sati satiation bar. Okay, so that's that's computer, computer systems and, and fluid storages and, and, and stuff like that. Um, I think I got slightly distracted from um, talking about what Mike's been doing. Yes, because I've got, yeah, so you know, Mike did do some of the decoration of the storage area, so um, he gets he gets partial credit for that. He says he says he was helping Pete with it, so uh, so we'll, we'll we'll say thank you to the two of them for that. And the paths, and oh yes, the paths are what got me onto the uh, talking about this building in the first place, because this path is dead straight and boring, and I'm I can't believe this this isn't going to last very long once Mike notices it and, and starts and starts saying hey this needs decorating. So I'm sure we'll get probably a hedgerow along here, maybe we'll get an archway across this entrance, maybe the archway, will m but probably move it a couple of a few blocks across, some flowers and trees and things on the other side I expect, and maybe a little bit of a path winding off towards the turret protected building over there, and I don't know. Oh, and there's also this machine over here that produces um, what's this? Is this charcoal? Right. So we've got <laughs> got a we've got a, a, um, a, hop, a hopping bonsai pot up, up here that grows trees. As you can see, this tree is clearly growing. You can see it by, with your own eyes. Um, and the hopping bonsai pot lets the tree grow. Then it turns it into all of its component parts. And I suspect this is a probably going to be a drawer with all of those component parts in it. Yes, there we go. Let's drop down so I can see it properly. Um, so yeah, that'll then be turned into sticks and leaves and wood. Uh, and then the wood and probably maybe some of the other stuff gets pulled out, goes into the um, coal generator down here, which presumably turns it into coal. Crafter turns oh turn charcoal into charcoal blocks. Okay, I see. Um, and then we've got a furnace up. Oh, the, no, the furnace is the furnace is burning this, cooking the spruce wood wood into charcoal. The coal generator is turning the leaves into um, into coal, presumably. Then this is turning all of that into blocks, <coughs> which can go into here. And these can then be taken away whenever we need fuel for other things. So that's not that's a relatively simple machine. It's, it's put together quite nicely. And then presumably, oh, oh those are solar panels to power it. Um, clearly, the bonsai pot is capable of dealing with its own saplings and uh, and um, and and, keep, and keeping it and, and just automatically regrowing. And I've just noticed the giant villager's head peering through the uh, gap between the trees over there. That's kind of bizarre. <laughs> oh dear. Carrying on with uh, the what everyone has been doing list, Tristan was indeed the person to thank for the uh, fluid system. I thought he probably was. So that's in the list here. He says he's also automated turning um, water buckets into sort of automated water buckets and cells, but he can't remember how or where, so don't ask him about it. He's been upgrading solar panels. He's made more carpenters. He's improved the charcoal supply, so that's that thing over there I was just talking about. Um, he's been making various alloys and things as well, because of course he has, um, and making some steel out of steel essence. Uh, and that was all pre-streams. So there's been a lot of playing between streams going on, which uh, is probably a good thing because otherwise we'd never get we'd never get anywhere if, if it was if we were only sort of playing for two or three hours a week. Um, but admittedly, that's all I play for. But it does mean that other people can uh, carry on with resource gathering, and I can just turn up and and use all of their stuff. But I suppose that's what happens when you're the um, the, the 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 lead on the YouTube channel. I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Um, on stream, he was mostly just sort of working on lots and lots of new metals and things, and fighting the. Fe it's a Ferris Rort Nort, apparently the big um, Zelda boss I was talking about. Pete has been um, <clears throat> making, continuing mystical agriculture, making steel ingots and out of essence and, and, and growing the plants. Let's go over and have a quick look at that. This all happens over here. This is so. This is the um, the, the growing area for all of the mystical agriculture. And I think I mentioned before, there's. Um, 
Pete's been doing a bit of automation over here. So there's a, there's a thing over there that I think is supposed to automatically deal with the plants. Although these all look very, very fully grown. So maybe it's been turned off for some reason. Maybe we've already got too much of it. So we've got all kinds of essences stored over here. And essences are interesting because you can use them to turn into various types of metals. So I found out um, on stream, is this? This is mithril essence. Good, I need some of that. If we get some of that and a block of inferium, I believe, and then come over here. You can then put in the Inferium, you can surround it with the Essence. This is like that. This does not work how I thought it did. Maybe it's maybe it's that one you put in the middle. Okay, I'm not sure what I was thinking of, but I've looked up the recipe. And if you put eight Mithril Essence in a, in a ring like that, you can make Manor Infused Ingot. So, um, so I don't need the Inferium for that. I do need these like that. And there we go. So that makes that makes two Manor Infused Ingots. So that, that's great. Um, and this, all this sort of stuff can then be, but I don't, but the thing is, you don't need to come over here. I only came over because I wanted to show off all the different, various different types of essences we've got. So we've got, over here, we've got basalt and lithium, mithril steel, and so on. So we're now able to make lots and lots of um, things from their essences. And I believe there are some slightly more complicated recipes, like um, using the, maybe it's using the crafting seeds or the superior or inferior. I'm not sure, but basically using all of that, you can make, you can make quite a lot of it mildly exciting. Some, uh, Use very useful stuff, and it's because it's just produced by these plants. It's sort of infinitely infinite supplies of it. You just need to go in and get get that done. He's also been making um, growth accelerators, and these are things that you can put underneath certain plants. And I think it's over here somewhere. Um, steel seed, yeah, it was this one. Um, I'll just dig it. I'll dig a bit of this up. I'm sure he won't mind. He'll probably mind that though. Oops. That wasn't meant to happen. Right. So these things are growth accelerators, and you can have them in a in a pile like this. And the the high the more of them you put in, the faster the plant at the top grows. So he was obviously short of steel at the time, and he wanted to build that as quickly as possible. Let's get back out of this hole. Not quite sure what happened there, but it um, lifted me out very nicely. So let's try and do a bit of repairing because I've knocked some holes in his um, lovely field. So that that, and then we need to. Um, turn that in back into that and then plant the steel seeds and I think I've now put that back as it should have been and I've not actually broken anything steel seed mithril seed yes yes we're just waiting for that to grow but you'll see this is growing quite quickly because it's um because it's on the on the oh, oh, over the growing things presumably if I if I um harvest this that's not quite what I meant to do either and replant it this now grows much more slowly. So yeah, you can see you can see that the steel, uh, the, the growth accelerators under the steel seed are really really helping how fast that'll grow. Oh, and as mentioned, yes, Pete was. I, I think I, I did say earlier, Pete was also helping with the building of the storage temple because apparently he he found the original one a bit too ugly, and I've landed in with the cows. Good. <laughs> I've just noticed some of the names of these cows. Um, Peter's a monster, Peter's a murderer, and R.I.P. Oh, I see. Presumably there was a cow called Mike, which is why there's now a cow called Mike 2 uh, that Pete killed, which is why there's a cow called Mike 2, R.I.P. Mike, Peter's a murderer, and Peter's a monster. Great. Okay, so there's, they're, they're having some sort of <laughs> trolling squabble uh, through naming cows. Fine. Um, Al wants us to know that he has moved house but IRL, so he hasn't done very much between streams. Um... He, mod he automated the Empowerer. I have no idea how that's going to be done. The Empowerer was down here, I think. Uh, now it's a chemical combinator, but it was... What's this? I don't know what that box is. That's a market. Okay. There was an Empowerer around here, but it's gone. But possibly because Al has automated it. So you'll have to watch his video to find out how he's done that. Um, similarly with the Atomic Reconstructor. Um, and a couple of other things. Oh, and he added in an automated pulverizer system, which is quite clever as well, I think. Um, in, in that it will basically pulverize all of the things that are needed. So that's that's good. Um, but as I say, go go and watch his video for that, because he'll talk about things in a lot more detail, and, and I'll actually know what he's talking about for his stuff. So, yes, that's all I'm going to have. That's all, all I have for you this time, and this has been a rather long video. Blimey. There was, um, I think people have been doing rather a lot of stuff between streams, and perhaps because I was missing for the last stream, there's a lot of stuff I didn't really know about, so there's a lot to talk about. So, thank you for watching, especially if you've managed to make it this far. Come along on Monday to, uh, to join us for the next stream and uh, see, see what we get up to. Um, harvest some more nuts. There we go. Um, I've eaten these ones, though, so it's not quite as useful. Uh, I'm on Wednesday for the Factorio stream, and as ever at the weekends for the... Um, 
for the catch-up videos and Thursdays for uh, for GTA videos and Fridays for there seems to be a, a steady stream of um, Minecraft tutor uh, no Factorio tutorials coming out on, on Fridays at the moment I'm doing quite well there if I do say so myself so thank you for uh, thank you for watching are those beds actually accessible no I don't think they are maybe you can right click through the gap in the hedge um, thank you for watching I'll see you next time <laughs> low headroom bed good <laughs> and now I'm trapped. Lovely.